Warren K. Moorhead, I mean, he's, a, he's a really interesting person, um, not a great archaeologist. Uh, he was an archaeologist. Uh, he came along at a time when archaeology as a scientific discipline was really in its infancy. Um, and so he didn't necessarily learn techniques that we wished he would have learned. Um, and, he, and he was a character who also had a role to play in and the beginnings of archaeology, if not also American history, in a, in a way that um, means that he could never have become the kind of archaeologist that a lot of us wish he had been. To understand what Moorhead was doing at Cahokia, you almost have to contextualize why he was there a bit more. So not only did he want the government to buy the place to make it a park, there was still a controversy in the early 20th century about whether or not that particular place, if not other mounded sites, were um, natural or not. And so his mission to go to Cahokia, because there was an argument, geologists in the state thought that Cahokia was natural mounds, um, despite the fact that for over a century we already knew that it, that it wasn't, that geologists were um, resistant, and so they were the impediment to stop from uh, keeping the, uh, the state of Illinois from purchasing this place. So. His approach then when he went to Cahokia was to open up the mounds and go to some of the big ones especially and use horse-drawn um, earth-moving machinery to um, cut great swaths of big trenches you know, into some of the most important mounds at the site. Um, Rattlesnake Mound, um, for instance, he worked on early on in the, in the early 20s um, and he just put a huge trench across one side and then a huge trench across um, uh, another side, just so he could prove that the layers in the mound were not natural layers, that they were instead um, laid down by Native Americans. So uh, he goes from mound to mound, um, Kuhneman Mound, uh, Ramey Mound, there's a series of these, what we know today to be some of the most key um, platform mounds and ridgetop mounds, ridgetop mounds being burial mounds. Um, and he does pull all this information into a set of monographs. Um, so we do have a record, and we also have the artifacts still from his excavation, so we can piece things back together. But he excavated in, su in, a, in such a way that he destroyed quite a lot as well. The Illinois State Archaeological Survey um, curates uh, for the University of Illinois and the people of Illinois all the artifacts um, from, from Moorhead's excavations at and around Cahokia. Because he also, he also seems to have appreciated early on, to his credit, that the Cahokia phenomenon was not just this one site with 120 mounds, but there were other outlying sites. And, and he went to those outlying sites to also prove that these were made by the same people who built Cahokia. Moorhead um, only managed to get the state of Illinois to buy a small chunk of the inner core of one precinct of the Cahokia site. The Cahokia site is really three large precincts strung out in an area that's covering about 20 square kilometers. Um, most people didn't know too much about the other two precincts in part because one was in St. Louis and it was obliterated shortly after the Civil War and the other one was East St. Louis and that was also heavily impacted um, after the Civil War and then over the years since uh, it was the mounds were leveled and people forgot about it. Uh, actually, Moorhead had done some work in the stockyards of East St. Louis and verified that there was a Native American occupation at Cahokian presence there that nobody had done up to that point. So what Moorhead did was really useful for then later work. Um, University of Illinois archaeologists who went back to East St. Louis and rediscovered the, the extensive remains that are, are still there um, right where Moorhead had found them and, and beyond. And Moorhead wrote letters endlessly to politicians. He rallied local support, local newspaper support. And I think, it, actually, I hadn't thought too much about this, um, but his background was something of a reporter, journalist. 
And he was already in the early 1900s, he was appointed, he was so well known as an archaeologist, he was appointed by Teddy Roosevelt to, the, uh, to, to be a commissioner for the Bureau of Indian Affairs. So he was suited to be that kind of political operate, operator um, in a way that he could get um, uh, the state of Illinois to pay attention because he knew who to talk to. It is something of a tribute to Moorhead uh, in that, that we are following in his footsteps to, do, to complete the job that he couldn't complete, and that is to preserve the entirety, or at least a, a substantial portion of the Cahokia phenomenon for the future. And St. Louis metro area is always rapidly developing, and it slows down at some times and speeds up at other times. And since people can't always see the archaeological remains of sites, it's, it seems easy to forget it and to erase it. So what's needed is a concerted effort, and this kind of concerted effort that really only the federal government can provide to purchase the key places around the St. Louis metro area, some with mounds, some without mounds, so that you could recover uh, that history. Um, anybody could drive from one place to the next and, and understand the, the ancient history of the Cahokia region by visiting the sites. So we are now trying, a group of archeologists and a, a foundation, the Heritage Conservancy, is trying to move um, the politicians um, and the public um, along to appreciate that this is really important and that this is an investment for the future that the citizens of Illinois, actually the citizens of the United States, native and non-native, need to make because this place mattered. Um, we are advancing. Um, I'm sure there will be some resistance in the future to especially certain sites. You know, people will wonder why, why there? Um, but it's more than just the, the main state park of Cahokia. Um, that is the centerpiece to this multi-sided um, urban phenomenon that happened here a thousand years ago. This has been a production of the Illinois State Archaeological Survey.